What's up, guys? Jeff is back with more of the bread and butter. We've got F1 2021 gameplay. This one is a little bit different from most of the stuff that I usually upload. It is a 100% race, which is not different from a lot of the stuff that I've been uploading lately. It is a 100% race against the AI, which I have not done much of. So the context here is this is my team, and I love my team. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun to create your own team and and run against the uh, the 10 standard teams, right? I think that's a lot of fun. What I've done here is I did season one with um, um, basically just five lap races and um, kind of low AI, and basically I just built up a little money and resource points. And we are starting this season as the third worst car on the grid, but what we do think we can do is build it up a little bit as we spend some of our money and, and work on facilities and spend some of these resource points and turn it into maybe a really good car, hopefully. So what we need to do for the meantime is maximize the points on offer that we can get and then try to recover a little bit as we move on and the car hopefully gets a little bit better. I've got Carlos Sainz as my teammate, which was where I put a lot of my money from last season. Uh, he was a huge get. Um, he was really exciting um, to, to add to the team and to race with, and I think that he'll be a real positive addition to the team. I think he actually scored a point last week in Bahrain, if I'm not mistaken. I did not. I had an, an engine fault, which is unfortunate, and it actually is going to put me in a bind for later in the season because um, I destroyed one of my two components uh, it's I can't remember what it is but it's whatever the bottom engine component is um, so I go across the line 124 4 and I thought it was decent but it's it's a full second off of signs and we're qualifying in p19 which is not good we should be in front of that Williams in front of me uh, and there's an argument that we should be in front of those Alfa Romeos in front of them so I think I actually bumped down the AI a couple points for the race after qualifying I want to say it was like I think I started at like 98 or something, and it was just, it was too high. So I bumped it down a little bit for qualifying or for the race. Um, you know, that's a constant battle is trying to figure out what AI you should be using. It's just, it's truly just brutal stuff. So um, I did everything I could. Let's hope it works out and let's hope it can be good. So the gist here is that after the first race, uh, I do think we got some performance improvements, maybe a little bit. It might be the fourth worst card on the grid instead of the third worst now. I uh, didn't score any points last week, obviously, with the DNF, with the mechanical DNF, which is unfortunate, but we will take it from there and see what we can do um, for the rest of the season. Uh, in a second here, I might actually let them go over the grid for you so you can hear a little bit of that. Um, I do actually get one space grid benefit because uh, Sunoda, I think, took a grid penalty for something. I don't know if that was a qualifying thing or... Uh, just different new engine components or what? Uh, maybe I should have done it, honestly, starting in P19. It might have been the smart move to to actually take some engine penalties and put some new new engines in there. But I didn't do it. But here's the grid. For today's race, good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fence starts from pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Lando Norris, and Ricardo. Fernando Alonso, Vettel, Verstappen, and Lewis Hamilton. Sainz, Mick Schumacher, George Russell, and Ocon. Stroll, Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Joker. Sonoda, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Latifi, Tigtum, and Nikita Mazepin. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So that's that. We're starting P18. Uh, could be better, could be worse. You see me going with the two-stop here. One thing that I will say that I'm trying to do is sort of is sort of replicate what the AI does in terms of strategy. I mean, I think as anybody who's done long races in career mode or my team will tell you, the AI is a bit questionable sometimes on strategy. I, I mean, for example, I think that this is probably a race where I could have done a one-stopper, uh, medium to hard. Well, I, I don't actually know that, but I think that's probably the case. So, But what I've decided to do is try to sort of replicate what the AI does in terms of strategy. And what you'll see here is that this is going to be a two-stopper for people. That's just the way it goes. And we're all on 
relatively similar strategies. You see Vettel with some or Sebastian Vettel with some really interesting with some interesting pit strategies throughout this race. Um, and then ultimately I think he has a DNF mechanical thing, so you know, it's whatever. Maybe if he'd been on different tires it wouldn't have happened. Who knew? You see me get my elbows out there a bit with Mazepin. I there was just I was not interested in being passed by Mazepin, so I just would take none of that. Um, but I, I do am I'm just really trying to stay within a second of these guys in front of me and and hopefully be in a good point where I can get some DRS action when we go to lap three and DRS actually gets opened. The forecast for this race, it appears that it's going to be all dry. No guarantees, of course. Uh, I think the rain percentage does go up to around 15 or 20% later in the race, and I'm on approximate weather, so it's always possible that it doesn't go exactly how I think. But you see that slick little pass there on Tictum. Uh, I was a big fan of that. I actually tried to pass a couple guys at that place throughout the race. You see me with the track limit there on the first lap, which... I don't want to ruin it, but it becomes a bit of a recurring theme, unfortunately. So watch, and you'll see more of that. I then passed Latifi at the same place. Get my elbows out a little bit. I tried to give him a little room. He did back out, which is probably probably smart on his part. But I do get to DRS here, which is fortunate. So not only do I get the benefit of passing him there, I got DRS, and he didn't get it. And so I was e I was easily able to to put some put some room in front of Tiktum and Latifi, and and Tiktum especially his. And well, Latifi, I guess as well. They're just not in a good car. I'm I'm head and shoulders above them and Antonio Giovinazzi. So, um, you know, we sh we should be competing with all of these guys back here pretty well. It'll be interesting to see if we can race with with Yuki Tsunoda and Esteban Ocon, but we're gonna try our best. So you see me get to pass there in Giovinazzi. Um, fast forward ten laps or so. I'm putting in some really good numbers. Um, I finally get the ability here to pass Ocon and go fake the inside, go outside. Uh, it's almost bad here, but you see he's in not a great position. I have to go a little bit late on the braking, but I managed to get by him and stay in front of him. And I'm now within a second of Sonoda. So fast forward a bit here. I get my first three-second time penalty on lap 18. And... <laughs> Um, that's not ideal. We've got another 45 laps to go, and I've already got three track limits penalties. And as you may know, the AI doesn't get track limit penalties. They just don't. It's, I, it's, they're on rails. They don't do it. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. Oh, a little questionable in there with Yuki, but I managed to get past him and stay in front of him. And for the moment, we are okay. So you see me here at P2. Um, finally going for my first pit stop at lap 23. So you saw those guys that I passed and we had a bunch of pitting, but I come out of the pits here and I'm right behind Yuki. So I got past Giovinazzi, I got past Tictum and stayed past them, but was not able to come out in front of Yuki Sonoda. So at this point I am questioning my own strategy a little bit because what I've done is, is stay out a couple laps on the softs longer than the other guys. I was proud of that pass. thought that was good. And Jeff says, okay, good work, great pass. Appreciate you, sir. But I, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I've mapped it out to go a little too long on the softs because I think maybe if – I think the other guys pitted at like 21-ish, uh, 20 and 21-ish, and I pitted at 23. And I, I did push on those laps. I tried to, to beat the undercut, but I just think, unfortunately, that they were a little bit faster than I was. And you saw me come out right behind Sonoda. So um, I, I am wondering if maybe that's – the wrong strategy if I should have pitted a little earlier to cover off the guys that I was racing against. Obviously, nothing I can do about it now, but it is something to consider in the strategies for future races here uh, because I don't want to find myself in a position where I've got the pace to beat these guys and I just I can't get past them because I'm making terrible strategy calls. So got my elbows out a little bit more with the Alpine there, but did stay past them, so that was good. And didn't get penalty, which is also good. You see me behind Kimmy here, who is apparently still racing. Uh, you think he would have retired. This is the second year of the my team. I, I sort of fake outside on Kimmy and just went <laughs> a little bit deep there. And he gets another look, but I just there wasn't a whole lot of room. I think that if he hadn't backed out there, he would have had a really bad angle into the corner. But he arguably was far enough ahead that it would have worked out. I don't know. It's hard to say, but... I'm now behind Stroll here. We're at lap 37. 
we've got to be getting close to another pit stop, and I'm aware of that. So if we were to get a safety car or something, it could be really interesting. Uh, so manage to stay on the track there. Get past Stroll, but you see him spin. Um, sorry about that. Uh, by the way, I've gotten another three-second penalty here. Uh, I didn't mean to, I swear. But anyway... You see here now, I'm I'm staying on this a little bit longer. Sebastian Vettel is out of the session. And I'm interested to see if they're going to deploy a safety car, and they do. So I have lucked out with this. So I pit, and I come out in P17, but it's not a true P17 because a lot of the guys in front of me who were on their second set of softs didn't pit. And, look, I, I did this strategy. I know that we are within two or three laps of the pit window, so... They absolutely should have pitted there for their mediums, but they just didn't do it. So you see them start to pit here. So I came out P17 after the pitting as we started post-safety car. You see me up to P13 here now after everybody's pitted. So I'm, I was true P13 after the safety car um, after the safety car session and me pitting. So you see me just get a little bit aggressive with George Russell there, but I did get past him, and he took quite... A, a time, not a penalty, but um, he, he went quite far back. So, you know, almost 0.8 seconds off, and I'm right behind uh, Mick Schumacher, and I just was easily able to get past him at the very next DR rest zone. So I'm in a good position here. I am three and a half seconds back on signs. I've got 10 or 11 laps to go here, and you see me just sort of cycling through some of these. 3.1 seconds, 2.4 seconds now, a couple laps later, 1.7 seconds going into lap 55. Um, 1.7 seconds going into lap 56, and I'm finally within a second here on lap 57, uh, but was not able to make the, get the pass done. Got inside the DRS range here, get a nice little exit on signs in front of me, and I'm in a decent spot here. So I'm, I'm four tenths back on signs, and I've got DRS. He doesn't have it. I throw on a little bit of the ERS. Just I've been charging up as much as I could and tried to get in range, and then just deployed it and got past him. So that was... A job well done. I'm past my teammate. That wasn't team orders. But you will notice that at this point now, I've got nine seconds of track limit penalties. And I'm going to be honest, guys. I think I'm going to have to just turn off track limit penalties. So look at that, 12 seconds now. Uh, but I think that I am I might have to um, go from strict to regular. I'm tempted to just because I think in a league race, if you're racing against real people, it's a little bit different when everybody's got to deal with the track limit penalties, but the AI just doesn't get track limit penalties. And there's a certain school of thought that's like, oh, we'll get good, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's there's this balance of of trying to to push, I guess. The the AI set setting was not in a position here where um, I could just not push. You know, I really... I really had to push for this, so I don't know. I'm a bit torn. I think on the safety, on the, um, on the track limit penalty thing, but I, I just know that it was. It's just sort of dumb to me that I can so easily get 12 seconds of track limit penalties, and every other driver in this race is completely immune to track limit penalties. I mean, I don't even know if they get pushed off the track if they can if they can get a, a track limit penalty. I just I don't think it's possible. So, going into lap 63 here, I wanted to show this to you guys I sort of I didn't have a ton of battery here but I will say I don't know if it's just the Molus specifically but I was really managing to keep a lot of battery throughout this I mean within within a lap or two I could almost always build back up to pretty close to full battery just very quickly so um, on this last lap here I did sort of try to push a little bit and just sort of Put a good number up. I wanted to see if I could maybe get my best lap of the race. I wanted to build as much gap as possible because with 12 seconds of penalties, obviously Sainz is going to pass me as soon as the race is over with the times, with the time penalty. Russell is going to pass me. I do not know what the situation is behind Russell. So it's very possible that if there's a big enough gap there that I could be securing P12 for myself if I can just manage to if I can just manage to stay far enough ahead. So I'm pushing as hard as I can to try to get it done. And I'm not going to get points, but I can only hope that I can get P12. Um, Signs is going to get a point for the team. So that's good. That's good for the Constructor Championship. And I think we have a sponsor goal that's that's uh, to get one Constructor point. So um, you see on the, on the steering wheel there, P13. 
I was not able to get past whoever was in 13th, and we'll see who that was in just a second. But I did get driver of the day, so that's something. It's it's a sad day because I got a lot of track limits, but it's a good day because I got driver of the day, and I did start P18 and worked my way up to P13. And in a lot of cases, I think this was a really good race. I just couldn't stay on the track. Um, the strategy maybe was questionable, but throughout the race, I think I really did a good job of getting overtakes where I could and staying out of trouble for the most part. Uh, sometimes I didn't, uh, and I might have used a flashback or two, but for the most part, great race.